Hello, uh, I'm Jenny Stafford and I'm a soprano. I was um, working with English Touring Opera this year um, as Despina in Mozart's Così fan tutte and as Sister Jenny or one of the soprano soloists in the Bach St John Passion. Sadly, as you well know, the performances were cut short because of the coronavirus and I, I just want to say that I will be forever grateful to English Touring Opera who have paid all of our fees, all of the artist fees um, for each of the cancelled shows. I, it's such an unbelievably generous thing to do and it, as I said, I will always be so grateful for it. Um, this is uh, this is a way of expressing my thanks, I suppose. This is a, a singing lesson, the third singing lesson in the series that English Touring Opera are, are putting on. There is also a, a series for children. Um, and uh, today would have been a Kazi performance, actually, so I would be preparing myself for that. Um, so it seems quite apt that I dedicate this to all of my friends and colleagues in the cast and in the, uh, the creative team, the wonderful directors and conductors, the orchestra, the company management and technical team and also the administrative team who all came together to produce the three fantastic shows as well as the children's opera this year. Um, I hope we all see each other again soon and are able to perform these wonderful productions. Um, so I'd like to start by thanking Stefan Logus, the wonderful baritone and teacher, um, who, who did the first two lessons. I watched them and I sang along with them and I've done my homework. Um, so this is the the homework that you set for the, or that he said, for the second lesson. So it started with puffing out the cheeks on a V, um, which incidentally is an exercise I do myself um, in learning a piece and in warming up. Uh, so I I love this one. <laughs> um, so. It was to Silent new Noon, mine's a slightly higher key because I'm a soprano. Um, so I puff out the cheeks and I'm going to explain a bit about how it feels. Um, let's go. Now, as I said, I, I love that exercise. I really feel, uh, Stefan talked about the buzz that you feel at the, the top in, in your head here. And I always like to think of that as a, a the sort of, you feel it in the sneezy place. Um, just before you sneeze, you go, everything sort of goes into that sort of up and above the nasal, uh, the sort of nasal cavity here. Oh, wait always have to think higher and further back um, than, is, than is actually possible. Um, and I really feel that buzz doing the puffing out cheeks. And there's no way of getting around the legato in that situation. If you keep the, um, the steady, strong, um, but flexible um, support from below, it automatically will will ring throughout. Now, the Stefan talked a lot about the the breath, and I just want to say how important that I, I well everyone thinks that is. Um, he said that he said it in such a great way that I don't need to explain it again. But it it, it 
if you don't have the support from below, from all around and really into the back, that's something I think about a lot. Um, really using these muscles and thinking of the really deep breath. Um, then other muscles, if you don't have that, other muscles will come in to support the voice and that can cause a lot of problems. It usually comes in the form of jaw tension or tongue tension. Um, and well, that's a, that's a constant struggle for me. So I'm, I'm sure that, that I'm hoping that that's going to be ringing ringing a bell for for some other people too. So I'd like to continue Stefan's um, talk on the passaggio, but um, thinking more about, um, well, mine. <laughs> um, so as a soprano, uh, I have two and they, each of them, take some different negotiation to get over these sort of slightly tricky areas in the voice where there's a it sort of seems like a gear change so we've got the lower end which sort of is around the sort of just above middle c d e area and then the higher end which is an octave above and just slightly higher from the sort of e flat e f f sharp that sort of thing so that's between them is the middle voice and below is the sort of the darker chest voice and then there's the higher heady space when you get above that that top um that top passaggio so um when i'm negotiating these areas it's it, it's all about um thinking about the basics so everything comes back to that proper deep breath and the support from the lower abdomen and the 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 back this i i, don't know, I can't talk more about how important that is um but on so we've got that as the sort of like driving force and then then you have everything here at the top of the column that um, Stefan was explaining about um, you want as much space here for the sound to resonate so I I like to think of a sort of yawn for this for this lower throat space there's a you want a, a width here um, sort of a physical width, so you're, you're sort of standing proud, but also a thinking of the throat as wide as possible. So it's, it, it adds a little bit of depth, as you can tell to the voice. So if I was singing without that, it would be... <clears throat> and with that, with thinking about the anchoring down and, and widening here, it becomes um, so it, it has that it you've got a lot this the extra space gives you more frequencies to play with that this tiny noise that's made gets to shoot into all of the, the all of this space that you've made and resonates even more the so there's the that's the breath uh, the throat, uh, like widening the throat, and then thinking about this just behind the nasal cavity space. You want to make as much space as possible. So it's, it's, it's the same, it's, it applies to the, the same thing. So it's, it's just making as much space without using any muscles. Um, and so, and, and that hopefully we'll just make it shoot into that buzzy space that we um that means that the the sound will carry because it's resonating so much um when i go higher i um that i have to think more about grounding my body down so you so you don't end up with this with only the higher frequencies so there's an exercise that i um want to do um this, I'm going to start with the puffy cheeks 
um as i said i love it um so in order to um to get the the, the puffy cheeks will give you the will make you find the buzz and then we want to try and keep that buzz to go on to the ah so just remember the feeling and like where that is so If I were to do that without the um, this like, width here, it would become. Oh, rather than. Oh. Um, so um, you may find that as you go up, so I was using the sort of, uh, I was singing in the, at the beginning, for the top of that fifth, that's the sort of beginning of my transition area. So find your find your own transition area and use that as the the top of the fifth. And then we just go up. And if you feel like the buzz isn't in it isn't staying in the the same place, or if it's not if you just can't hear it anymore or feel it, um, that's when you need to ground more into this proper breath support so uh, yeah we're just gonna go um higher and higher i'm afraid <laughs> I get to this the top note here the buzz slims down um, it feels more intense um, and smaller somehow and again it's just about support it does it's not necessarily more breath it's just more of a feeling of grounding um, so so we did that one The jaw needs to be unhinged anyway, but as you go higher, the, the the jaw will naturally open open out more in a relaxed way. Everything should be so relaxed here. Um, so yes, that's how I sort of go around my like th that sort of tricksy area, and really any area in the voice. It's it's all about going back to the basics and really supporting. Um, I know that singing high is often quite a scary prospect and sometimes it's just knowing that you're going high that means that, you, um, that, that you're terrified and you think you're not going to be able to sing it. But my advice would be just to go for it. So use all of these, the, the, the basics that um, we've been talking about and see what happens you don't like don't be afraid of making a noise often if you're scared of it these m muscles that as it will tense up and you'll sort of lose the support from below and it'll turn into a bit of a scream not that that's a problem i i just say have a go and then you can you can hone it gradually and do what whatever's comfortable and um the buzz will get, as I said, more intense as you get higher up. And that is so exciting. So sometimes in the, the especially up at, like in the B, C, C sharp area, I can pretty much only hear buzz, but it, it's such a, it, it's such an experience. Um, so have a little fun with it. And the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is vowels. Um, so we want to make the vowels as bright as possible in order for them to, to go to that heady, buzzy space. And we want them all to be in this, resonating in the same place. Um, easier said than done, but it's worth a go. <laughs> all of these exercises, they, um, they take a little time to sink in and 
maybe sometimes you'll slip out of the uh, quite what you were supposed to be doing but it doesn't matter no one's listening and no one's judging so with these i go for as, as a lot of people do um very italian at vowels so it's it's as bright and pure as possible so we've got i don't know whether you can tell i've got a bit of a yorkshire accent which is not entirely useful for singing um but if you sing these bright vowels and try to um feel them in the same place as you feel that buzz then um that that that's the aim that's you're, you're doing what we all want to do <laughs> so um we it's again the basics of really breathing deeply and supporting from this whole 360 degrees uh, low abdominal area um and and then keeping the jaw unhinged so what i usually do is sort of cradle the jaw to to stop well so that I can feel when I'm I'm trying to use it um, often that once it wants to come in for English speakers I think on an E um, because we, we we do that a sort of Wallace and Gromit E <laughs> um, but you can make these vowels without using the jaw with only using a little bit of um, necessary tongue um, tongue muscle activity. So that's the aim. Uh, we're just going to do it on one note and to find the space I'm going to do the puffy out. Um, find a note that's um, a comfortable note in your middle range. Um, that's a G for me. And so I'm going to cradle it and just go on without we're trying not to move the jaw. Um, you may find that some vowels are more difficult than others and sometimes your unruly jaw will just come in um, without you realising it was going to. Um, it's always a fun experience to realise what your body's doing without you knowing. <laughs> um, but we want the vowels to be as even throughout as possible, exactly the same as each other, and we want the sound to be as even throughout as possible. So that's the first exercise, and then I would go up. So the this exercise, you, you're going in step and on each vowel, and you may want to take a breath. Just take a, take a breath wherever you want. Um, so it's starting on woo and but moving in step. Um, and so you want to feel all of the, the support. Sometimes uh, the, the, there is flexibility in it and as you get higher, you may remember to think that this grounded thought. Um, and yes but that's what we're just aiming for an even sound quality throughout moving on to homework for this session um i want to apply um, a lot of these things that i've been talking about to a song so choose your favorite song and I, I'm going to go for Sally Garden, stick with the English song. Um, my favourite song changes day to day or hour to hour, so this um, this is just what I want right now. Um, so this for, for this I'm going to use the, the puffy cheeks to get the legato, that, so it's Stefan's homework from last, last session, so I'm trying to build on that. Um, but so do the first phrase, puffy cheeks, then try to do just the vowels of the first phrase of your piece. So for me, down by the Sally Gardens, my love and I did meet, the the vowels are
I realise it's a bit of a strange request, but I do have reason for it. <laughs> um, this is to try, so we do the puffy cheeks to get the legato, and we want the same legato and to be finding that same buzzy space for all of these vowels and to keep them as even in the voice and as even as each other as possible. Um, so, If, if I'm honest, I would keep to that and not put consonants on yet if it were just me, but I realised that, uh, that all of these technical things are a little bit frustrating and a little bit clinical and really it's nice to sing a, a whole phrase of a, a song. So if you want to do that, I haven't talked about consonants at all today, but it would be a using the jaw and uh, jaw as little as possible only when it's needed and the tongue in the tongue tension in the same way or tongue um, activity in the same way just to try and make this column as free as possible um, so I hope you enjoyed that um, and I I, I, I realised that singing is a it's, a, it's an expression of feeling and text and what we're doing right now is um, all of the technical, uh, just going to the very technical things and not really doing much of that. <laughs> um, but building this technique is a way of um, getting the foundations to sing and emote through that technique. So what we're wanting is um, to find that space where whenever I really feel emotional, whether it's sort of a sadness or an extremely happy, I feel it down in my like low abdomen, like my, my laugh, my proper belly laugh comes from right down there. And that's what we want. That's where this breath support comes from. And so we want that. So effectively they, they will marry together eventually. It's just uh, a little bit of uh, frustrating and long process in order to get to that stage and be able to express through the technique. Um, and also, if you're finding that some of these exercises aren't working or if the, um, that you don't quite understand what we're talking about, that's also fine. We've all been there and we just don't be too hard on yourself. Don't get annoyed. Uh, just be kind to yourself and do what feels right and enjoy it that's that's what singing's about um so that is it from me um i i know that my lovely friend freddy frederick long will be giving the next lesson so that's something to look forward to um and if you uh if you are enjoying this and the uh, and you're interested in looking up the other exciting things that English Touring Opera is doing to try and bring music and inspiration to you in this very difficult time that we're going through during this pandemic, uh, then please do visit their website, which is www.englishtouringopera.org.uk. Um, so thank you very much for your patience and um, I've, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're all staying healthy and as happy as you can and look after yourselves. Thanks very much. <laughs>